In this video I will show you how I built this enclosure for my new CNC. Maybe some of you are asking yourself, don't you already have a CNC router? And the answer is yes. But the problem is that that CNC router is at my parents place and I'm living in an apartment. So there's no way that that 1.5 meter by 1 meter CNC will fit in my apartment, so I got myself a smaller CNC which should be adequate for a small space. In order to use the CNC in an apartment, I need to build an enclosure. The enclosure will fulfill two purposes. On the one side it will prevent sawdust from flying all over my place, and on the other side I hope that it will reduce the amount of noise. Like most of my projects, I started to design the enclosure in CAD. And when I was happy with the design, I ordered the 15 meters of steel needed for the project. Originally I wanted to build the enclosure out of aluminum profiles, since they are very easy to work with, because they have these T-slots, so assembly is easy. The aluminum profiles were just a little bit pricey, so steel it was. I was able to cut the steel at my university, where they have this awesome vertical bandsaw, which saved me a lot of time. With the now cut steel, I was able to weld the enclosure. I used a stick welder, because that was what I had on hand. The welds you will see are not the prettiest, I would even say they look pretty terrible, but to my excuse, stick welding is not the easiest type of welding, and I'm just happy that it worked at all. It is what it is. I also ran into the issue that the circuit breaker constantly tripped, like you can see here in this clip. This really slowed me down. So the next day I changed location to my camper where my big CNC lives, and here I had no problems. The process actually was quite enjoyable. With a scrap piece of scrap tubing I tried the silver paint but in the end decided against it and painted the enclosure black because it fitted the stand more on which I will put the enclosure eventually. Then it was already time to install the doors. I marked the holes, used the center punch, drilled 3.3mm holes, cut the threads and then mounted the doors with M4 screws. I was amazed at how sturdy the whole assembly was. A couple of days later, I unscrewed the doors to paint them because I hadn't had enough spray paint in the first place. I also gave the frame a second coat. In hindsight I should have spent more time on cleaning the steel because on some parts the paint is peeling off. But it doesn't bother me too much. Now that the doors in the frame is ready I cut the clear acrylic sheets. Fortunately I had access to a big laser cutter so that was no problem.
There were 64 holes in total which I had to drill and also tap, and 40 holes for just the two acrylic sheets on the sides. I was really happy that that worked out without any hiccups. Between the clear acrylic sheet and the frame I put the ceiling tape. I don't think that it was absolutely necessary, but also it wasn't too much work. To attach the acrylic sheets to the doors, I glued some aluminum L profiles inside the door frames with VHB tape. For the two remaining open sides, I just used some thin sheets of MDF on which I glued some styrofoam using construction adhesive. For lighting I used this LED panel I already had laying around. The problem was that all the 45 LEDs on the panel were connected in series, so 3 volt per LED. That's over 130 volt DC which I would have needed, and that's a lot. So I rewired the LEDs in groups of 5 LEDs and connected them in parallel. So 5 times 3 volt, that's 15 volt, and that is manageable. If I had to guess why the 45 LEDs were connected in series in the first place, I would say the manufacturer did it so that when one LED breaks the whole lamp stops working and you have to buy a new one, but that is just a guess. I also designed a spoil board for my CNC. I left slotted holes in the board so that I still could use the T-slots of the CNC bed rather than just slapping a piece of MDF onto the bed and covering all the very useful T-slots. For reference, I used the 3D model of a 6040Z CNC I found online. When I loaded the 3D model into Fusion 360, I compared the overall dimension of the 3D model with my CNC and it all seemed to be accurate. So I just assumed that the bed would also match. I then machined the spoil board and I was really excited to install the board and getting closer to finally using the CNC router. But when I put the board on the CNC bed, the slotted holes didn't line up with the T-slots. I just didn't check if the slotted holes of the 3D model matched with my CNC. So I had to redesign and machine a second waste board. I will upload both designs on Thingiverse, so if anybody is interested, I put a link in the description. Then I was finally able to put the CNC router in the enclosure and after some final details the enclosure was done and I was able to use the CNC router in my apartment for the first time. So now let's use the CNC. 
As a first project, I thought it would be nice to organize all the collets. I found it quite funny how small the collets are in comparison to the collets of my bigger CNC, but besides that, the machining worked just fine. I just had to adjust the acceleration and the settings because it seemed a little long. So now that this is done, I also machined some aluminum and for that I secured the aluminum in a cheap drill press vise which I mounted on the wasteboard. And that worked perfectly. The aluminum I machined was for a branding iron I wanted to build so that I could brand a couple of Christmas trees I machined for my mom. For the heating source of the branding iron I used a heater cartridge I got from an old 3D printer and that worked really well. Now that I used the CNC with the enclosure for a couple of projects, I can tell you that it definitely was worth it and I'm really happy how the enclosure turned out. I hope you enjoyed the video, if so, make sure to subscribe for more. Vielen Dank fürs Zuschauen, thank you for watching.